Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna be talking about otitis externa, which is one of the most common diseases of the external ear. So let's start. So in this video, we're gonna be looking mainly at two diseases. The first one is the acute otitis externa, and the other one is the malignant otitis externa. Starting with the acute otitis externa. So the simple definition for this is that it is the inflammation of the external ear. As you can see in this picture, the whole auricle looks inflamed and there even seems to be some liquid coming out of the ESE. Now what are the causes of AOE? So it can be caused due to micro aberrations using cotton swabs or other objects. It can also happen due to swimming because swimming decreases the pH of the wax. So normally the wax has a pH of 4 which is acidic and this acidic wax keeps the bacteria away from the ESE. Now if you are swimming a lot and constantly have water in your ear, this will decrease the pH and it will become basic. And due to this, the chances of infection increases. Next, it is more commonly seen in immunocompromised patients. So people suffering from AIDS or even older people who have lower immune system have a higher chance of getting this disease. Next, people who are already suffering from diseases like psoriasis, eczema or have allergies, these people also have a higher chance of getting this infection. Now, AOE can be divided into two types. It can be localized or it can be diffused. Talking about the localized AOE. So this is also called as furunculosis. Basically, it is an infection of the hair follicle caused by Staphylococcus aureus. So Staphylococcus aureus is a gram-positive cocci and it is one of the most common bacteria which causes furunculosis. Now where exactly in the ESE does this infection happen? So if you've seen my previous videos, it will be very easy for you to answer. But let's see. The lateral one third of the ESE is the cartilaginous part and it is this part which contains the hair. And as we just saw, the localized AOE is an infection of the hair follicle. So naturally, this infection will only occur in the lateral one third. Next, talking about the diffused AOE, this is also called the swimmer's ear and it is a pseudomonal infection. The localized is due to Staphylococcus aureus and the diffused one is due to Pseudomonas, which is another bacteria. Now, what are the clinical features of this disease? So there will be severe pain, which increases upon moving the jaw. So while moving the jaw, the ESC will also move a little bit and due to this slight movement only, there will be a lot of pain. Next, there is a positive trigger sign. So this is very important to note because in the question they might mention that the patient presents with a positive tragus sign. So this points towards acute otitis externa. I've mentioned about this tragus sign in my previous video also, but let's just quickly see here. So this is the auricle and this part is called the tragus. Upon pressing the tragus, the patient will experience severe pain. And if this happens, it is called a positive tragus sign, which is seen in AOE. The patient will also have purulent and foul smelling discharge coming out of the ear. There will be hearing loss which can be due to accumulation of fluid or edema. And it will be difficult to perform an otoscopic exam because there will be severe pain when you will be doing the examination. And lastly, there will be red swollen ESE with purulent debris and discoimated epithelium. Now what is the treatment of this? So it's very simple. Because the patient has severe pain, you will use analgesics. Because it is a bacterial infection, you will use antibiotics. For inflammation, you can use corticosteroids and you can even use glycerol packing. This has antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties. Next, jumping on to the second disease, which is malignant otitis externa. So this is also called as acute necrotizing otitis externa. So malignant is in the name, but it is not malignant. It was named so because when they discovered this disease, there was a very high rate of mortality. And so they thought it must be malignant, but as such, it is not malignant as you read in cancers and stuff. The most common cause of this is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So the same Pseudomonas that we saw in the diffuse variety of AOE, here it is the most common cause. The second most common cause is Aspergillus fumigatus, which is a fungi. And it is most commonly seen in immunocompromised patients and people suffering from diabetes. Now you must be saying that a lot of diseases are seen in immunocompromised patients and diabetics. So why have I highlighted pay attention here? Because if they give a question about malignant otitis externa, it is very very likely that in the question they will also mention that the patient is either immunocompromised or diabetic. 
in most of the questions that I've seen, they have always mentioned this. So while attempting the questions, please pay attention to this point. Again, there will be severe or out of proportion pain with greenish to black discharge. This MOE can also cause cranial nerve palsies. And the most common one that they ask in the question is a facial nerve palsy. You will also find granulation in the EAC. And this is another very, very important point. They will almost always mention this in the question that there is granulation tissue in the EAC. Now, what are the investigations and the treatment? So the diagnostic investigation of choice is the technetium 99 scan. And the prognostic investigation of choice is the gallium 67 scan. Now you must be thinking that if technetium 99 scan is a diagnostic investigation of choice, why isn't it also the prognostic investigation of choice? Now this is because if you do a technetium 99 scan even once, the test stays positive for a long period of time. So if you repeat the test in the next few months also, it will come out to be positive. So we can't repeat it again and again because it will come positive and we won't be able to know that if the patient is improving or not. So that's why we have the gallium 67 scan because this tells us the prognosis that if the patient is improving or not because this does not stay positive for a long period of time. It can be done every month. And the last point of this video, ciprofloxacin is a drug of choice. So that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, so please leave them in the comments or you can even DM me on Instagram anytime. I will leave the Instagram link in my bio. Thank you.